okay. um, for an over one million dollar property. Um, okay. We do have two other agents that are um, possibly in the runnings for this, and I just wanted to know, like, we put together a good presentation, but wondering if there's anything okay. else that we can do to stand out above the rest. Well, it's hard to answer that when I don't know what's in your presentation. I don't have access to it at the moment. So, um, are you? Uh, what type of structure do you have of in your presentation? Is it structured, well, or is it just show up when you wing it? We break down. We we show a couple of comps. We break down um, the net sellers proceeds to different things that we'll be doing to advertise the different things that we offer you know or you know the photos and things like that um so the ability to uh, differentiate yourself is not so much in the you know the pictures that you take um this is this is what this is what how i present um, it's not the probably the best there's probably people that do it differently but I explain what's what the difference is the result is not going to be who has a higher definition pixel picture okay uh, we're going to use the highest definition but and we're going to use great photography as well as anybody else that's dealing with properties at this level uh, we're going to have the the photo tours we're going to have you know all these different uh, aspects that basically everyone else has and the reason you're going to hire me in order to handle this property at this price is because i know the market and knowledge of the market and the ability to present your product are two key things that you're going to have to weigh uh, make your decision upon and are those two things uh, uh going i'm going to prove to you that these two things are going to help you achieve what it is that you want at the end of the day. And so at the end of the day, when I say at the end of the day, I'm going to demonstrate that I know what their motivation is. People, and let, let me put it this way, and it doesn't matter what price range you're in. Okay. You may think it does because it has a lot more zeros, but people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so if I can demonstrate that I have a thorough understanding and the development of that achievement, what that achievement means to them, then I can get on board with that same level of passion and care. Um, <clears throat> then what I present is pretty much the same as everyone else. Um, present your strengths. You know, if you don't have a big track record in selling million dollar homes, that's probably not something you want to, you know, obviously discuss. I've never sold a million dollar house. I've sold three in the last 20 years. Okay. That's not something that's going to instill confidence in them versus somebody else who can make come out that has a great track record in selling million dollar homes. Anybody in this market can sell a million dollar house. The, um, uh, so I, I don't know if that helped or anything, but when I, when I go up and I'm still working on that $8.6 million listing in Woodenville, I've never sold anything over $2 million. Okay. But the, the confidence, uh, and my ability to get into their head about what it is that they want and then develop some unique uh, unique uh, things that I believe they want to hear or that they'll need to see. It also depends upon the personality type. Okay, we want to get into personality types of who you're presenting to. Are they a D? Are they an I? Are they an S? Are they a C? Will also depend on how I shift and pivot during my presentation. Um, and that's what good quarterbacks do. They call audibles. When they see the defense line up on the other side of the line of scrimmage and they can see, oh, oh the play that I had ready to call right now ain't gonna work. They've lined up perfectly against it. <laughs> so I'm at the line going, 24, 24, turkey two, turkey two. And that means, okay, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're not gonna run the play I had in plan. We're gonna play, we're gonna run turkey two. <laughs> that means somebody's got to move out around this way. And so I'm going to read, uh, read their audience and then present to the personality style uh, if that's helpful. Can I add on to that, Todd? <laughs> oh, God, so, this is um, what this is all about. I'll shut up and listen. Yeah, I think a, a good thing, too, is turn around, turn the cards around and ask them 
uh, when you, when you pre-qualify saying, you know, if, if everything looks good tomorrow in our presentation, are you guys ready to hire me? Right. Right. If everything looks good and the numbers make sense. Are you guys ready to hire me? And then they break down what the objections are going to be. And maybe ask them as well is what are you, how do you know when you choose the right real estate agent? So just ask them, you know, what, what is it that you're looking for in a real estate agent? So that way, you know, exactly when you're pitching to them, what, what their main, uh, things that they're looking for. So a good pre pre qualification to the listing appointment. So a a good confirmation when you call to confirm your listing appointment. So you can build your case like an attorney going into court, you do a discovery and you collect information in order to present it to be persuasive and influence your side. How did you get the, uh, how did you get the list? How did you get the, uh, lead? I'm sorry. My kids are beating each other up right now, but we, it was a referral from somebody that I went to church with a long time ago. Okay, good. You kind of have a little bit of an edge a little. And then another thing I would say is get the, get the million dollar thing out of your mind. Million dollars today is not like it used to be back in the day. A million dollar home today is, it just as well be a $500,000 home. It's, it's a psychological they just seem thing. To, they just seem to be more particular. It's, it's not, it's not a necessarily an issue for me. They just seem to be more particular than the average home seller. What were they? Well, before? they're interviewing brokers and that tells you all you, all you need to know. Um, if somebody uh, gives me, says, Todd, come on out. We'd like to, you know, cause I've heard of you as a referral. And then I discover that they are interviewing tells me everything I need to know in prepare in preparation for this event. Not only do I have a level, uh, a trust, but they're going to be very systematic, uh, in their approach in order to find the person that they feel is going to best represent them. <clears throat> so it's going to be a little bit of a different presentation versus, Hey, you know, hug, 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 love you, love you, love you. This is the price I think you're going to be at. We're going to do some really great things. We're going to put it on here. We're going to do the staging. We're going to do the photography. We're going to get it all cleaned up, shined up at this price. This is how much you're going to net. We're going to list it on Thursday. We're going to review offers on, on Tuesday. Hopefully things go well, go ahead and sign <laughs> done. Okay. That's a, that's a great referral presentation. This referral presentation has turned out to be something more of a competitive environment where these, these, these sellers are like going, okay, I want to get as much as I can out of the property at the best representation and value that I can get. And so, yes, they are going to be more particular and more uh, precise in their decision-making. So you need to show up with something that's going to help differentiate yourself besides fancy photos. Um, a virtual tour and some pricing. The price is the price is the price. You know, you and the competition may fluctuate. Um, I typically, when I'm presenting uh, and I know I'm competing, uh, there's going to be, you know, a couple of different types of real estate brokers that you're going to meet and talk to. And uh, as you probably already know, because people at this level happen to be know-it-alls typically, meaning their internal decision-making. Uh, they make the decision based upon the information they know, and they're not going to take anyone else's advice on these matters at times. And so when I'm presenting to an internal, or I believe that their internal decision making is like, who am I to tell you? I'm sure you already know. And then if they deny what I have to say, they have to argue with themselves from being right. So it sort of puts them in a corner verbally. And so, you know, in this scenario, uh, Jim, uh, who I'm, I'm sure you already know, uh, who am I to tell you? that there's a couple of three different types of agents. One, that they're gonna reduce their commissions to get your business like that, and it's gonna reduce their available services. Second, a real estate broker that's going to overprice your home in order to get your business to win you over by overshooting by the thought of additional money in your pocket, which is very attractive and sweet. And then there's a real estate broker that uh, you're trying to interview to navigate where are you gonna find that sweet spot in between. I am not here to necessarily uh, for two things. There's two levels of this relationship. One is the business relationship 
and the one that we're going to create as a result of doing business together. And, uh, and that's how, <clears throat> Megan, uh, that's how I begin to separate and help them understand that I'm not going to be the one without telling them that I'm going to overprice the property, get the business. And I'm certainly not going to be the one that's going to undercut my prices to win you over and provide you less services in the end. And so this, this is some of the dialogue um, that I'll use uh, in, in situations that, that come up. These are some of the audibles that I will use in presenting. Uh, another part to this is <clears throat> knowing the numbers. You've got to study the numbers. Um, and not just so much the numbers about the property that is being the subject property, but all the properties in and around a 15 to a 20 mile radius that have sold over a million dollars, particularly in this case, I believe it's a view home on some acreage. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be researching up in Stanwood. I'm going to re be researching up on Jordan Road. Uh, I'm going to be looking at Lake Stevens. I'm going to be looking at Granite Falls. I'm going to be looking, you know, out in Tulalip. Uh, I'm not going to go any further south. There's some really nice view homes up on the hill in Marysville that have shot in over a million dollars. And I'm going to take a look at a blanket of properties that have sold over a million dollars. So I'll show up and say something like this. Before we narrow down uh, on the property uh, here on your price, I want to let you know that there have been 14 homes that have sold in the last two months that have been between $1 million and $2 million. There have only been three houses that have sold in the last four months above $2 million. And there've been no sales above $3 million in the last eight months. I'm going to have that. It's going to be on the paper, but I'm not looking at the paper. The paper is on the table. I'm going to be, I'm going to be regurgitating, regurgitating that information. And they're going to like, Oh, that guy knows this freaking million dollar market. And I go, that's what's going on here in your general area for properties above the $1 million mark. As you can see, there's clusters of properties. Now, as we narrow this down for view properties, and I'm just gonna to continue to narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down, so I understand. So here's another part to marketing properties at this price range, <clears throat> Jim, is that you have to know where the buyers are coming from, okay? I've researched this information. A lot of these buyers are not coming from this local area. They're gonna be coming from the South Snohomish and King County markets through it and, and uh, migration for economics uh, and um, economic migration. And your demographic, your economic demographic of buyer is gonna be very particular about this. So we're gonna watch very carefully and use very careful linguistics and phraseology in order to attract the correct audience that will pay the millions of dollars that this house is gonna uh, be valued at. So understanding the audience, your audience is not going to be one that is going to want a bluff property, um, depending upon the usability of the acreage and the other amenities, I'm going to build a case. So I understand how to communicate the value of this property to the audience, because if you take a look at these 13 homes that have sold in the million dollar plus range, all of them have a unique special uh, part to each single one of them. And if you want to diagnose, if you want to go a little deeper, I can take a look at some of these phraseologies uh, and the linguistics used on these on these marketing in order to attract the right buyer to pay to pay the highest possible price for your property in the shortest period of time with the least amount of hassle to you. That's what you're going to hire me for. <clears throat> All said with confidence. Anybody else have any input? It's also, um, it, it also is, uh, has great uh, multi-unit features. You could definitely turn this into a multi-unit with basically no money. It's got two entrances, two kitchens. It could also be ADU if you just put a small ramp on the front step. Okay, uh, so you're talking about, so, so, so oftentimes, uh, you, what, if I hear you, you, people believe unique properties bring more money. And um, when you say could be or could use, um, it's hard to sell potential if it's not already currently there. 
And so with, with unique properties, having that explanation on how this property is intended in its current use and how it could be used are key features that we're gonna identify in the remarks section. I have the ability to understand that and in order to convey it, in order to get you your right property. And then that's gonna possibly go into play in, in regards to market time. As we go back and take a look here, uh, Jim, in the scenario, these homes have been selling in this price range between 13 and 26 days. And so um, I wanna set the expectations correctly that because you have these unique features and qualities around your property doesn't instantly mean that we're going to be able to find the buyer right off the bat. It could take a little bit of time and a lot of effort and work in order to find the buyer that fits this unique style of living for this piece of property. So I'm ready to do a listing appointment right now. <laughs> yeah, you is. <laughs> I love this topic. What'd you have, Doug? Um, you know, I'm not necessarily experienced in this particular listing presentation mode, but I guess it's true with all sales is that, you know, people don't care about your charts and your facts and your figures. You know, they don't, they don't, they don't care about how much you know until they tell you they know how much you care. And, you know, it should be made personal to them. You should make a friend. And, uh, you know, people don't buy, everybody's going to come in with the same basic numbers and the same basic listing agreement and the same basic, you know, plan of attack. Um, they need to buy you. Uh, so in the discovery phase, find things in common and then use those to your advantage. Um, you know, make a friend. Yeah, when I showed up for the listing appointment, I thought it went pretty well, but he mentioned to Megan afterwards he wanted a private conversation and he wanted to make sure that she was taking the lead and she was getting, you know, I don't know exactly what was said, but I feel like um, I don't think he was prepared for me coming in, maybe. Uh and, you know, I did tell him that I invited Megan to be on my team because I've watched her for a year and I think she's amazing and, you know, she's got great skills and that's why we're working together, you know, and she said the same thing. But they did have a conversation privately about him wanting to make sure that, you know, she's the one he contacted. He wants to make sure she's getting, you know, the best uh, commission and, you know, taking the lead on this and all of that. And she did assure him that. But, you know, we kind of have that going on. How did that conversation, I mean, get uh, brought up in regards to, I don't know. I'm just kind of going off what I oh, hear. Well, well, we had a listing appointment and then he texted her and said, can I speak to you privately? Gotcha. Did you guys, I mean, did anybody bring up that, you know, you're a senior, she's a junior? I mean. You would want to go in there all in as a as a team. We're in this together, not no kind of hierarchy thing. How, I mean, how did yeah, you even yeah. have that discussion? Well, she got there first, and she was telling him, you know, my experience when I got there. Yeah, Closer. you want to make that all no, one. I was, That's I was yeah. introducing her as she pulled up. I said, "This, you know, as I told you, Marilee's, you know, my partner. We work together." She's great. You know, you're going to get the best customer service. Um, you're ranked number one in the office for customer care and for sales. We're not going to miss anything here. It's, you know, got two sets of eyes. Like it wasn't, I don't, I don't know. I think I know how to close this deal. Okay. <laughs> I think I know how to close this deal. Um, because I've, I've brought in rookies out uh, on a lot of listing appointments. I say, you know, one of the biggest reasons why you're going to hire uh, Megan is because you're going to give Megan the experience in order to jumpstart her her uh, career. And what a kind gesture that's going to be. And I'm going to be sitting in the background pushing Megan to learn new things as we move forward to get this deal done. I mean, if he was going to be if he was going to say that 
and uh, say that to you. Uh, and that came back to me. I'm going to go back out there and say, you're going to do this because you're going to help Megan. I don't know about that one. <clears throat> Amongst all the other information. When I've got, gonna... well, I agree. I, it sounds like he's, she's got the edge with the referral part. But when you're batting, I don't know who the other two agents are, but if they're high, high, uh, yeah. He's, he's, I, I think in this case, and I think, I think because I, I feel based, that's how I'm thinking. I'm thinking based upon a feeling and an intuition. Yeah. That, um, what would you rather do if the numbers were the same, Jim? If the numbers were the same, Jim, would you like to hire somebody else who's a stranger or help a friend? Well, that's just it. I don't know that where they are in that relationship. I'm just, I'm just asking you yeah. if you were that, if you were that seller, right? You know, if the, if the numbers are the same, Jim. So one of the are. other agents um, is actually in our office and goes to the same church and is right. fairly new, but has a little more experience than Megan. Okay, that's probably going to be Joel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because oh, Jose. Or, or it could be Werner, or it could be Rob. Maybe it's me. It could me. be Jim. <laughs> it's more, me. More, no. Hallelujah! More than likely, it's Joel, because they have some, some um, you know, connection uh, through churches. And so, um, well, you know, compete in the, on the level that you can compete with. You know, show your strengths. Um, and, and you can demonstrate that strength. Say, look, you know, hiring, uh, hiring us means... Not only are you going to have, you know, the person you want to help out and grow their business, you're going to have somebody that's going to be supporting her with years of experience Yeah. that can, uh, can see things happen, you know, uh, ahead on the horizon and then prepare and move the plane around that turbulence before somebody who is new in the business. And in addition, you're getting two brokers for the price of one. Uh, how can you beat that? Yeah, that's perfect. Just an FYI, keep newness out of a conversation the best that you can. Unless it's about the competition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, Megan did do her research and she pulled up the other person's, you know, track record and she's pretty stellar compared to that. So she can go in with that too, you know, actual facts. Are you going back in there with her or is Megan go by herself? We're going to do the PowerPoint present. We're doing a Google meet with them today. And um, we're going to do, we did make a, a quick PowerPoint. Um, you know, it shows holding costs and, oh. and different uh, price ranges, high, low, um, things like that. It's very short, but I'm going to let, I'm going to have her lead it. So we practiced it all day yesterday. Excellent. I'll sit, I'll sit back with my big old, fat mouth shut and no <laughs> hey, it'll be a great experience win lose yeah. win or lose I'm that's what i told her great I, told experience. Her we, I told her we don't need them we're fine we can go out and sell two houses and make the same commission but let's go in we're we're armed we did our homework yesterday all day so she's prepared and i think she's gonna shine and do a great job we are prepared we are a team <laughs> yes we us the dream team <laughs> I have a question. Yeah, Mantel. Did did you guys say that you guys go to the same church? Yes. Do you think these are the type of Christians that be would against praying before the meeting started? I would think about using that to give myself a little bit more edge. What are they? The type of what? Are they the type of Christians that would be objective? against praying before the meeting yeah i would maybe it's, think about doing that too if they're really devout christians i would start out the meeting with the, just a little 30 second prayer yeah I'm give you a little bit more edge i don't i don't think that's going to work in our favor huh? yeah, just a suggestion you bet yeah. know your audience i know that's a deal. i get where you're coming from i just don't think that they're not yeah yeah. Know, no. know your audience. That's, That's a good it. suggestion. Yeah, Excellent yeah. He's point. a smart guy. Smart guy. He's got a lot of stuff. Way more stuff than his wife. You know, <laughs> he's a collector and uh, he knows stuff. He's a techie guy. And I, I liked what you said, Todd. Like, he's already, you know, he's got it in his head. He's the expert. So he needs to, 
convince him own own self, you know. Um, and I think he's, I think, like you said, also let him know we care, which I do, of course, my whole business is based on that. Um, you know, and that he is supporting Megan, you know, we both want to support Megan. That's why I invited her onto my team. And that's why he, that's why he, he wasn't, he wasn't shy about that from, yes. from what I, from what I understand. And so yeah. what he, what he did is our greatest weakness is our greatest strength he case, exposed yeah. a little bit and so i mean that's a strength and a quality that he wants to his his weakness is that he exposed his strength right right i get um, that and and so you know you may want to leverage that a little bit in order to help influence an outcome that will serve everybody in a positive direction yeah, maybe we should just start out with that. I, it's you guys are going to present the way you're going to present. Yeah, um, this we're just everyone here is just giving you different ideas and different approaches. And I know it's like, oh my gosh, we are totally prepared. Now I feel like I'm not even prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. If you don't mind was, asking, what was, was the uh, what brought up the Google Meet versus going out in person? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think Megan's, we just suggested it. We'd already been out there once and, um, we have, a, I, I do have a pretty nice presentation I put together so we can just, and he's they're techie. Just, he had like, a yeah, they're just break. a very busy family. Yeah. She's um, been sick. Yeah. I, I'll give you a suggestion. I will, I will, I will provide a suggestion. Uh huh. Um, email him, uh, authentic sign. A uh, listing agreement, just the listing agreement. This is what I was going to poke on. Yes. Just the listing agreement, not the input sheets, not the disclosures, not the exhibit a, none of that other stuff, just the listing agreement. I'm sending you over in a listing agreement for you to review and sign. Before our meeting. Before, or be ready to send it right there because oh. you want to get the signature. Okay. That's what I was going to poke on is how do you make the ask if you're doing it over video? I mean, yeah, it's how are you going to close it? Very, very complicated to do that. Well, yeah. see, I went in like he was our client and we, Megan sent him over the um, seller disclosures to fill out, you know, the utilities and the FERPTA. And then he was like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. So uh, being a being a techie guy, it'd be something like this. Hey, Jim, are you familiar with DocuSign? Yeah. Okay. Of course you are. We use a a, a similar system called AuthentiSign. DocuSign, AuthentiSign is the same thing. I'm going to be sending you over the agreement for you to review and sign. Uh, please let us know, and we can get this process started. I would I had I would have already assigned a timeline based upon our discussions, and so by March third hypothetically, March 3rd, we'll get your home on the market. And by signing this uh, DocuSign that I'm going to send to you, it's going to get the ball rolling so we can start setting the stage for the grand opening on uh, mm -hmm. March 3rd. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do have that in the PowerPoint too. our plan of action specifically for them and the date we want to launch and why we want to launch on that date. Yeah. And then have that listing agreement. I'm going to send you over the DocuSign okay. immediately, review it, sign it, get it back and put us to work. That's how okay. you do the ask. Okay. We'll do that. We'll have it ready on another laptop and Megan can hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> hit the button. <laughs> Rob, um, uh, Rob, do you have any suggestions as a listing broker? Sure. I, I didn't, I missed the first 10 minutes, so That's maybe fine. already covered, but I would say that if you, you're, from my experience that you've went there once now you're going in again and probably this is your last could be your last shot i yeah. could be wrong but um if you get to the end and they're you know i'm going to send you over a listing agreement and they start um uh, you know well no we'll, well let me let us think about it we'll get back to you maybe go through the um okay well let you need to think about it go through that together with them what is it you need to think about are you happy with me are you happy with the company are you happy with you know however you want to say those questions 
and then address each one of those. And, and then the last one I always ask, okay, well, if you're okay with all those, is it the commission? And then they say, well, yeah, it's the commission. And then you, or whatever it is, then I address it through those series of questions. And then, and another thing I always ask people throughout my listing presentation is I'm asking them questions to find out what's, what's most important to them about this process. And one of the things I say is, what, what's the biggest challenge that you're facing when it comes to choosing an agent or or selling a house? It depends on the situation I'm in. But in this situation, multiple agents, I would ask them, what's the biggest challenge you're facing when it comes to choosing an agent? And put it back on them. Let them say whatever they're going to say Ooh, and then hone down on that. Okay, great. You're worried about somebody who can market it right and has experience. And then, you know, I'm just giving examples. But that's that's what I do when I get to the end. And I'm working on getting better at that. That's something I had to come around to. Yeah, that's super great uh, advice. I appreciate that. And I'm not used to going up against other agents. I usually don't have to. So having makes, some competition is a little different for me. It makes us all better. It makes us all better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're just, just going to pull up our big girl panties and go on in and hit them hard. <laughs> the, the, the one thing where I did my best presentation is when before I got there, I didn't care if I got the listing or not. And I just drilled down on the guy and I got it signed and I got out of there. And versus when I, when I'm in the mindset of, I really want to get this and I need it. And so I, I'm working on that with myself is, as I have a listing appointment on Monday and I did, and I started going through the numbers and I was like, you know, this lady might be a little off. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go in there and I don't even care if I get this and I'll do the best I can and try to get it signed. So. That's what I was telling Megan. You know, we don't need it, but um, I was thinking, you know, we're going to go in kind of soft and ask some questions. Now I'm wondering if we should just go in and drill down because he's a drill down type of guy. Be yeah, why not? Him? <clears throat> why, why let him meet with two other people before you, it, you've already met one and Trust, before you yeah. try to get it signed? If he if he meets with somebody else who's going to be a closer, you're not going to get that. Okay, we'll think about it. We want to make sure that you're comfortable, and we don't want to push you. I know this is a good <laughs> decision, and yeah, um, you know we we're going to be here for you, and we want to make sure that you're okay with whoever you choose. No, I'm not okay with whoever you choose. No, I I I don't know how long you've. I'm sure you have lots of experience, Marilee, but I. I um, uh, I said to the guy one time in the situation, he kept looking at the other agent information on the table, and I said he wasn't going to sign. I said, you know what, Randy, I've been doing this a long time, and I know that when I leave here, the chances of you ever calling me back are very slim. So let's just do this. What's the worst thing that could happen? Let's just get started today, okay? Let's get it signed. I'll give you 30 days. If you want to cancel for any reason, that's fine. We don't owe anything. We'll part our ways, but... Just let's just get it going. And what's the worst thing that can happen? And he signed. So what's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, so yeah. ABCs. <laughs> Always be closing, baby. I know what that <laughs> means. <laughs> yeah. The, the B backs, uh, you know, I'll be back. I'll call you back. I'll let you know. Yeah. Normally it's, I'll let you know I listed with somebody else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Okay, yeah, I'll let you know I listed with somebody else. Because Rob shows up and closes the fucking deal. And I don't get the listing. <laughs> and well, I, and also, also, you know, we're here to close today and get you signed up. And that's how we're going to be when we're selling your property. Yeah, gonna... it, it, if, if you're not used to closing, um, it can be sort of, uh, I don't want to upset anybody. Or, <laughs> I don't want to offend. I don't want to, no, we don't, we don't want to offend anybody. But we can feel like we are offending somebody if we're asking them like the third or fourth time. Yeah, and a big one too, you can use that for your advantage saying when you are, uh, remember Todd, you're like, I can tell you're uncomfortable. And they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like, now you know how, we, how I'm going to drill the other agent, right? <laughs> yes, yes. When I was closing on that one guy, I, I can tell you're feeling uncomfortable right now. He goes, oh, yeah. I go, well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with you being uncomfortable because it means I'm going to sell your home. Everybody's uncomfortable right before they sign. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Love it. 
<laughs> if you weren't uncomfortable, I would be concerned. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I love you guys. Man. Right on. Good All right, stuff. Man, I'm going to get rolling. It's a thirsty a Thursday today. So, 